um, I think, or more, two years? Maybe two years since we did our last video, so it's been a really, really long time. I just want to say first of all thank you so much to everyone who supported us. Without your encouragement we wouldn't be doing this again. settled we're in our new home um, we have a place of our own which is great so I'm gonna make this video really for people with DID and um, just some advice I suppose for getting by I know a lot of the time it feels like that you really can't live with this disorder and it's really really difficult but I'm here to say that there are ways that you can make it a little bit easier on yourself I think a lot of people are actually skeptical because they believe that you can't have a disorder and you and then you can't have a disorder and live your life which I think is really just such um, I think it's such like an old view you can have any kind of mental health disorder and still be okay we all have a mental health and keeping our mental health healthy is important your mental health is on a spectrum so there's a spectrum that is really good to use and you'll see that it's it lists good mental health bad mental health disorder and not a disorder so it means that you can have a disorder and actually have good mental health or bad mental health and it means that you cannot have a disorder and still have good or bad mental health. So it's completely unique to the population and that's something that everyone needs to understand. So these are just some of the little tips that I've learned over the years that has really helped me deal with my disorder. One of the main ones, wear a watch. Wearing a watch for me helps me ground myself. Um, I forget a lot of the time. Um, like It's like, oh my gosh, what time is it? And then I can just literally remind myself sometimes time seems to go faster or slower or I seem to find gaps um, noting these gaps and stuff is a good place to start it's good that you can keep a diary then of all the times that you seem to have missed in your day once you have a diary you'll be able to see your patterns and trends you'll be able to see when you're stressed or when you're dissociating the most hopefully then you'll be able to find what triggers and what's going on around you in your environment routine is the most important thing to me ever um, we literally have like a set time so we go to bed at nine o'clock and that sounds really early but we need a lot of sleep for us we get up then at half past six after half past six we then go to the gym for an hour uh jake will generally come out to do that then we get ready and go to work and that's a nine to five monday to friday the weekends are slightly different we give ourselves a little leeway but not too much <laughs> we also have a cat <laughs> say hello This is Iris. She has two different colour eyes. <laughs> Probably can't see from that distance. Come on. <laughs> Routine is important. I find that your brain sort of ends up putting in a pattern. So when it's actually used to going to bed at a certain time and it's used to getting up at a certain time, and it's used to doing things at a certain time, for my brain, I find that alters are then used to being around at certain times. So like I said, Jake is in the morning sort of from half past six to half past seven while we're at the gym. And then from then it's like I come out the rest of the day nine to five and I'm able to do my job. Now that's pretty set in stone now um, and working with the idea is something that I'm gonna cover in another video. Communication. Communication is so important in a system and um, to communicate with your alters is a big one. If you can do that then I think you'll have a far better chance of recovery. Um, recovery I mean sort of being able to just live alongside your disorder. Talking to your alters and finding out exactly what they want, exactly what their ideas are, what their goals are, um, what they want out of life, what they want out of living in your life, essentially. I used to be really sort of anti-Ed. Like Ed is quite aggressive and he's quite defensive and he'd be quite rude. At least that's how I find him. So I was quite intimidated by Ed, but the gentleman who diagnosed me said that I should stop saying Ed is a bad person. 
and he said to me would you like it if someone kept saying you were a bad person and wouldn't listen to you and then I sort of like the penny sort of dropped so I started to ask Ed how he felt what he wanted to do just everything I, I started to ask him what he wanted out of life and actually we started to work together and Ed became less destructive and his other disordered behaviours have gone down um, and I found that's really really helped. It's important then to put rules and regulations in place. You don't have to be like really strict with rules and regulations but for example I would really focus on putting a rule in as a routine. When you've got a routine I just find life is so much easier so I actually find when I'm out of work I'm sicker. I can't con I don't concentrate as much and so I dissociate more because I dissociate more I get more anxious and it's this really really vicious cycle so on that note keeping busy is something that's also really important to me the more I keep busy the less time I have to dissociate so the more time I have for myself when I'm not so busy it's when then my mind starts to daydream and distract and that's when I'm more likely to switch. Knowing when you're more likely to switch is really, really important. So is the action versus consequences with your alters. Um, is this big thing in child development that you learn a lot in psychology. It's when you basically teach someone or teach the child what's going to happen if they do that. So you wouldn't touch, you know, you tell them not to touch the hob because it's hot and you'll burn yourself. And it's very similar with at least how I find with my alters. So I say to the boys, if you don't let me come out and work, we won't have any money. If we don't have any money, we won't have nice things. If we don't have nice things, we don't have our home. If we don't have our home, that's really going to be horrible and really going to stress us out. In order for us to work together, that has to be taken into account. Um, and I found that the alters have really worked well with that over the years. Uh, it's something that can't be really be mastered overnight, but to be honest, a routine in particular has really, really helped. So that's helped our system sort of find an equilibrium. And most importantly, talk to someone. I know it's really, really hard, but if you find a friend or a family member, it doesn't have to be a therapist. If you talk to someone, I can't, like, you just get this weight off your shoulders. It really does help because I think your alters feel accepted. They feel more like that they can let off some steam if they need to. So you need to find that extra special person who's going to give you that time to do those things. This has been our very brief first video, just as an introduction. I hope it's helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit our Tumblr sites. We have one that's for me and one that's for my alters. So um, whichever one of us you want to speak to, please head on over. Thank you so much. It's been great to come back. Um, thank you for listening to me ramble. I hope this video hasn't been too boring. And if you'd like to see some more, just like this video and let me know what kind of things you'd like me to talk about. Thank you so much, everyone. Mwah!